Amen. Father, we give you all the glory and the honor, the praise. You are worthy of it all. And we thank you that you've spoken to us this morning, telling us and declaring your love over us, Father. And this morning, our desire is to tell you how much we love you. We are coming back to our first love, Jesus, where it's all about you. As the song says, we're sorry for the things that we've made it. But we declare this morning that it's all about you again. In Jesus' name, let the name of Jesus be lifted up in our lives. May it be a banner over our lives. May it be the name above every other name, over every other trouble, over every other circumstance. We place you, Father, in the center of it all, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. How are you all today? Good, 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 good. Are you ready to fall in love? Are you ready to fall in love? I see a couple of strange looks. <laughs> Aren't we in church this morning? <laughs> Amen. Falling in love with Jesus. That is our, our title this morning, Falling in Love Again. Now, has anybody been in love? Yes. Has any of you been in love? Still You're still in love. <laughs> That's a good answer from the husband. Crave you later. Falling in love. Amen. I think we can all relate to it. And has, any, has anyone ever fallen out of love? Is there anybody who's fallen out of love, in and out of love? Hey? Hey? You've been hurt, you've been, you've, been, uh, you've been head over heels in love with that gentleman or that lady, just to discover that she's not the one. But isn't it when you are in that moment, it is as though that person is heaven and earth, nothing else matters, how could we ever fall apart? And yet, something happens in the circumstance, in the love bubble <laughs> that breaks the heart. Amen. So this week, as I do, I was waiting on the Lord and said, Father, what do you want us to, to minister about? And, and for those of you who don't know Throne Room, for those of you guys who don't know what we do here, unfortunately, we don't prepare. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds really bad. It sounds really bad. It sounds really... Um, it's not that we are unprepared, but it is because we are led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we don't come here on a Sunday morning with, we've tried to come with a bunch of songs uh, to worship the Lord with. We've got some ideas, but normally those ideas get thrown out of the window anyway. And God comes every morning, every morning, without a shadow of a doubt, and He comes and He speaks to us through the worship, unprepared. And this morning, the theme of love was so strong. I don't know if you guys could feel that and realize that. God's love over you as his people, over us as his children, was so intense this morning, and I was so moved by that. Um, yeah, so 1 John 4 verse 19 says, if you have a Bible, you can turn there. This is our theme scripture for this morning. 1 John 4 verse 19. It simply says that we love because he first loved us. We love because He first loved us. And that's the, the theme of it is God's grace by His Son that leads us to repentance. It is not because of, of anything else other than His goodness. See, I'm a sinful man by nature, but God's love and His grace has caused me to love Him so much back. And because of that, He clothes me with new robes, with a clean robe, with righteousness. He, clean, he clothes me with dignity and strength. And I am who I am simply by the grace of God. Amen. He loved first, and therefore we love. And this, uh, this week that passed by, we had some time in our prayer group on Wednesday. Susan was here, and Vantel was here, and the Lord spoke to me so, so intensely. He said to me, Nathaniel, do I still move your heart? Do I still move you? Are you still so much in love with me that when I say move, you move? Or do you you know, when you, you and your wife, <laughs> my wife is not here now, so I can speak freely. <laughs> when, you, when you are madly in love with someone the first time, and they say jump, Popio. If they say jump, you jump. <laughs> if they say we're going to the mall, we're going to the mall. If they say we're going to the beach, we spoke this morning, we're not even beach people, but you in your costume off to the beach. You move when you are in love with someone. You do things you never would have done when you are in love with someone. And the Lord said to me, Nathaniel, are you still moved by me? Do I still move your heart? 
And I had, to, I had to do some investigation and check myself and say, Father, if, I, if I'm not moved by you anymore, then I'm coming back to that place of being moved by you. And you know you're in the throne room. If God says move, <laughs> out those doors we go and we will go where he sends us. Amen. So being moved, that was the question number one. In John 21, verse 15, you guys may know the story. It's after Jesus had died. And Peter, before the, the crucifixion, Peter denied Jesus three times. You guys remember that story? The cock road and Peter would deny Jesus three times. And this is after Jesus rose from the dead again and he came to, to meet with the disciples again. And they were having breakfast after Peter threw the net on the other side. And he says to Peter, Peter, do you love me more than these? And Peter replies, yes, Father, you know I love you. But three times Jesus asked him, are you sure you love me? And the third time, Peter was almost hurt, and he said, Father, don't you know me? Don't you know that I love you? And he says, then feed my sheep, feed my sheep. So I want to make sure this morning that your heart is on fire for God, amen. And I'm checking myself as one saying, Father, I want my heart to burn for you. Again, we sang this morning, and my heart burns for you, Jesus. Do you still love me? That's a question for you. Do you still believe me when I say I move mountains? Do you still believe me when I say, do you believe that I'm able to do the impossible in your life? Now that's a big one for us. Sometimes we believe, but we don't believe that God is able to do the impossible. Now impossible is where God begins. Amen. That's where God begins. When you have an impossible situation, we've got some gym members here, so I'm not going to talk all the gym stories out this morning. But the gym has seen some impossible situations where only God could fix it. There was no way that we in our own strength could fix anything. But when impossible comes onto your plate, you say, thank you, Jesus. You are about to perform a miracle because only you can sort this out. I don't know what you're facing this morning, but if you are facing an impossible situation, say, Jesus, I give this impossible situation to you now because that is where you move. We had t-shirts we made for ourselves. We said, I still believe. I still believe in everything that you say. Amen. Do I still believe? Do you still believe me? And do I still move you? Now, we said this morning that sometimes things happen in your life that cause you to fall out of love with someone, isn't it? Sometimes you, you as a husband might say something stupid to your wife, like, where's dinner tonight? <laughs> and she could fall out of love with you for a split second or two, right? Or, or where's, my, where's my work uniform? I gave it to you three days ago. <laughs> you do the washing. <laughs> you do the washing for a change. There's things that, that happen in your life. That is light order things, but there can be more severe things that happen in your life that cause you to, your heart to break. And it's difficult sometimes to mend that heart and make it whole again and say, Father, I love you with all of my heart. I'll give you an example. When we sang the song this morning, Romeo, I was, I'm so glad that you took over. That song we sang this morning of um, Here I Stand Completely Devoted to You. And what's the chorus? My King, you are more than enough, and I give you all of my worship. I wrote that song when I was going through the deepest valley with our little daughter that passed away. She died. And I sat and I looked at God and I said, Father, how are you a good God and you allow your son to go through the valley of the shadow of death? And when I prayed and I trusted you for a miracle, it did not come to pass. And that's when the words poured out of my heart. And I said, Father, you are still enough. You are still more than enough. Even though it looks like the wall is breaking around me right now. And my daughter is now back with you. Sometimes things break your heart and you think, Father, I could never love you like I loved you before. I can never love you like I once loved you before. But the word is clear that his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. As the heavens are above the earth, so are his ways higher than ours. Thank you. Sorry, I apologize.
And I want to tell you this morning, this is the word of the Lord speaking to you this morning, that everything you've been through, I know this with my whole heart, even though I fell, not fell, but my heart was broken. I know that every heartbreak and heartache has brought me to this very moment. Amen? You are sitting here this morning because of every heartbreak, every failure, everything that didn't seem to have made sense. God brought you to this very moment, that very seat you are sitting on right now was predestined for you and said, My child, I still love you. Will you come back to your first love? I've never stopped loving you. But I'm asking you now, will you come back and love me like you once did before? I thank God that I managed to. It's not easy. I still, I still get teary-eyed about it. But I, I, I thank God that he, he took my broken heart and he mended it. And I believe that broken heart can now minister to others. It becomes a testimony of God's goodness and how he's carried you through. Ezekiel 36 verse 26. I want you to read this. And this is a word for you this morning. Ezekiel 36 verse 26. And the Lord gave me the scripture for you this morning. 36, 26. And he says this. That I will give you a new heart. And I will put a new spirit within you. I will remove your heart of stone. And I will once more give you a heart of flesh. A heart that can love again. And I will put my spirit within you. And I will move you. He said, God, you still move me. And I will move you to follow my decrees. And be be careful to keep my laws. But I will give you a new heart. I will remove the heart of stone. the, The heart that can no longer love. And I'm going to give you a heart of flesh. I'm going to give you a new heart and a new spirit. It speaks about a new season. It speaks about those things that have been, not being forgotten, but that then become testimonies of God's goodness. Amen. So that's uh, that's really the heart of my message this morning. But I want you to turn with me to Luke 15. Are you guys still okay? Luke 15. Verse 11, we all know this little story, and every time I seem to minister from the story, a new little revelation comes to mind. And Jesus tells the story about lost things, things that got lost, right? And like I said, you may have lost your love, you may have lost, lost your, your desire for, for, for something that you need. But Jesus says this, he talks about the lost son, and this is where we are this morning. And Jesus continued and said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. And so he divided his property between them. So basically what the son was saying to the father is, I wish you were dead, right? I wish that I can have my money. Because the inheritance only gets paid out once somebody has passed away, right? So he says, Father, I want my inheritance from you. And I, I thought about this for long and hard. I thought, if, if my son Nehemiah said to me, <laughs> where is my inheritance? I probably <laughs> would give him a good <laughs> whack behind the ears and say, get back in line, right? But in this story, the father does what the son asks. And it's like the father knew, I have installed everything I could in that young man. I've given him everything I can at the moment. I've given him his identity. And I believe the identity this morning is the identity of Christ. Burn that in your heart. So the identity is Christ. And now the son says, give me my things. I want to leave you. I want to move on. And I was watching the series. I don't know, maybe some of you guys have watched. I'm not that holy. I'm not that religious. I watched a series called Why Women Kill. Do you know that, do you know that series? Why do you want to It's by a good like why women kill? I don't know why I was sitting next to my wife watching it, giving her ideas <laughs> of how to get the inheritance. But this lady said this most profound statement right at the end, and I might get it wrong, but it was along the lines of sometimes God gives you what you want. So that sometimes it will be taken away by the world and you will realize that He is all that you need. Sometimes God will give you what you want. And the world will take it away because you weren't ready for it. 
but then you will realize that God is all that you need. And it struck me, why women kill? Go watch Why Women Kill, the last episode. Don't say Nathaniel said so. But this must have burdened the heart of a father, right? My son wants me dead, but I know there's no more I can do for him. He's old enough now, he's grown enough. I'm going to give him his wealth. Go, and I just pray that it will go well with you. So we continue in the story. Not long after that, verse 13, the younger son got together, all he had, set off to a distant country, far, far away from his father, and there he squandered his wealth in wild living. He wasn't ready for that, right? He wasn't ready for all that money. He squandered it in wild living. And the word says, after he had spent everything, he had nothing left, it is as though the heat of the drought became even more severe. There came a famine in the land, in that whole country, and he began to be in need. You see, when you need God, suddenly we know where to call, isn't it? So he went and hired him out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields and to feed with the pigs. This is a wealthy boy now sitting with the pigs. Look how far he had fallen from his father's house where he had everything he needed, right down to the lowest of the low. We know we're talking about Jews here, so the pigs were as low as he could go. Right? I don't know if you feel low this morning, but there's hope for you. Verse 16, he longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. And when he came to his senses, when he came to his senses, in this moment, I believe, the Holy Spirit reminded him of who he was. It was a reminder of the Holy Spirit. You see, sometimes there's, there's this little voice that says to you, Nathaniel, you need to go to church this morning. Or Nathaniel, you need to go and give Brahma a hug this morning. There's this little, this little voice that we believe is the Holy Spirit leading us and guiding us in all truth and understanding. And he came to his senses, the word says, and he says, my father, my father, I don't know in this moment of his lowness, sitting with pigs, eating the food, or trying to scramble something from the pig's table, if he's heard his father's voice saying, Nathaniel, I love you. I love you. And he heard his father's voice saying over him, I still love you. The words is he came to his senses and he came up with this plan and he says, Father, I have sinned. I will go back. First, verse 18, I will go back to my father. Praise God. I will go back to where I belong. And I will go back to my father and I'll say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy. Can you say worthy with me? Yes. Worthy. I am no longer worthy to be called your son, but make me like one of your servants. So he got up and he went back to his father. But while he was still standing a long way off, praise God, his father saw him. And this morning I believe the father sees you. The father, the father sees you this morning. He sees you. The father saw him and he was filled with compassion. The love of the father, I believe, met his son on the way back home. And he ran to his son, I believe, with all his might, he ran back to his son. And he threw his arms around him and he kissed him. And then the son started his speech and said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you and I am no longer worthy. Say worthy with me. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, quick, bring the best robe. Hallelujah. Say worthy with me. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are not called to be a servant. The Father is not interested in you becoming a servant. The Father is interested in you becoming a son and a daughter. Hallelujah. You are worthy. So the Father ignored his speech and he said, Quick, bring the best robe you have. And they put the robe on him. Amen. Isaiah 61 verse 10 says, we can turn there. Isaiah 61 verse 10. It just popped into my spirit quickly. He's clothed us with righteousness. 
Isaiah 61, verse 10. I'm talking about a new beginning. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in God, for He has clothed me with garments of salvation and array me in a robe of His righteousness. Hallelujah. He's giving you a new robe. He's giving you new clothing. He's giving you a new heart. Amen. Where were we? Luke 15. I'm giving you a new robe. He said, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Take off. Take off. I want you to see this picture. Take off the filth. Take off the hurt. Take off that where he was being. Take off that. Take off every sign that he was walking and moving among pigs. Every scent, everything that could have been a reminder of his past, take that away now and give him the best robe. Put it on him. Put a ring on his finger. A sign of God's covenant with you. Well, this morning my ring is not in this hand. My finger is a little swollen up <laughs> from a boxing match I had at the gym. So I'm wearing it on my right hand. But put a ring on him. And make a new covenant with him. Remind him of my goodness. A new commitment. Give him a ring. And put new shoes on his feet. For the journey that he's about to take. The old things have passed away. And the new has begun. Amen. Bring the fattened calf. Say celebration. Celebrate. Celebrations. Hallelujah. I like a celebration. Bring the fattened calf. Kill it. Let's have a feast and be merry and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead, but now he is alive again. He was lost and now he's found. And then they began to celebrate. I believe God this morning wants you to love again. The word, the word comes to me, go and love. We received that word at the beginning of this year. Go and love. But this morning, it's like the Lord saying to me over you, I want you to live again. I want you to live again. I want to give you a new robe, a new ring, new shoes. I want to make all things new. I want to take the heart of stone. I want to make it a heart of flesh. I want you to love and burn for me again. Amen. Coming back to our first love. Coming back to our first love. Amen. <laughs> and there the bell goes. <laughs> My time is up. Amen. Romans 8, verse 28. Now we know that all things work together for good, for those who love God. Amen. Who are called according to His purpose. You are called this morning. Psalm 24, verse 27, verse 4. This is my closing scripture. I don't know why I wrote 24 there. That's 27. Psalm 27 for my most favoritist <laughs> scripture in the Bible. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of my Father forevermore, for all the days of my life, and gaze face to face, face to face, not from a distance, but face to face at the beauty of my Father and seek Him in His holy place in the temple. Amen. This morning, I want to ask the question, I haven't asked this before in throne, but I want to ask, if you want to get a bit closer to God, if you want to get a little bit closer than where you are right now, I want you just to stand with me. And I'm standing right now because I want to get a bit closer. <laughs> I want to recommit myself to going and being moved by God again. And we're going to just pray a simple prayer. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that you've, you've truly come to meet with us. That every moment we've been through, every pain we've faced, every trouble we've been through, and that we may be facing right now, Father, has brought us to this very place. But this morning we believe that you are the son of the living God. And we believe that you are able to draw us close again. And we say, Father, we are coming right now. We're coming to meet you face to face. 
We're coming to burn for you again. We are coming to be moved by you again, Lord Jesus. Take our heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh in the name of Jesus. We want to say we love you, Lord. We want to say we're coming back to our first love where it's all about you, where it's not about us. Just sing with me if you can. So I'm coming back to the heart of worship where it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you. Sing that again. I'm coming back. So I'm coming back to the heart of worship where it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made. It. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. That is our creed this morning, Father. That is our cry and that is our anthem. We declare that it's all about you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We thank you for this time of fellowship together. I pray that you will go before us into the week and into this long weekend, into the voting polls, Father. <laughs> I pray that you will go before us. We pray that the blood of the Lamb will overshadow us right now. Thank you for your people. Thank you that you love us so much. Thank you that you first love us. And we say this morning that we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.